do thyroid conditions and headaches go hand in hand? Welcome, my name is Sarah Peternell. I'm the owner of Family Nutrition Services here in Denver, Colorado. Today's big question addresses headaches and what I've found through my own research for myself, because I have Hashimoto's, is that this link is not entirely clear. Yes, there are some studies. Uh, I'll be publishing those uh, links down below in the pinned comments so you can see for yourself. But you know what? The evidence is not striking that there can be a relationship, a direct relationship between Hashimoto's and headaches. And the reason why is because there can be a number of different factors that can contribute to why a person with Hashimoto's may also be getting headaches. And unfortunately, I think what happens a lot of times, I see this in my clients, I've experienced it myself, is that when a person presents to their doctor with ongoing tension headaches, migraine headaches, etc., their doctor may tend to look at some other factors first before checking out the thyroid and vice versa. If a person has a thyroid condition and they present with a headache, their doctor may not necessarily associate the two. So today in my video, I'm excited to share with you what I think from a holistic nutrition perspective are some of the connections between common or frequent headaches and for those of us who have a thyroid condition. And so today I'm just gonna say kind of thyroid conditions in general because what I want to connect the dots with is disruption in the endocrine system and how that might be the missing link. So whether it's Hashimoto's, thyroid cancer, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, graves, we're talking about kind of a host of different types of thyroid conditions that may be related to headaches. So. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about um, some of these uh, conditions where we see an endocrine disorder, endocrine disease coexist typically with migraines. The most prevalent research basically says that migraine risk is the greatest in individuals uh, who have endocrine-related conditions. Um, there is research on the thyroid migraine link that dates back to the 1990s. Researchers have kind of returned to examine this potential relationship, and newer studies are actually suggesting that a migraine may be one of the very first signs of facing low thyroid function and vice versa. So the good news is, is that, you know, we're never um, too tired of a subject to go back and study it again. This is great news for patients, and it's also great news for getting better treatment of your thyroid. So. You know, the thing is, is that when I'm working with a client and I have them conduct their new client intake paperwork, I have a section on some of the kind of neurological nervous system uh, conditions that they might be experiencing and or symptoms. And I have so many clients that check the box for headaches, but they never knew that it was related to their Hashimoto's or their thyroid condition. And so they may have actually been using a totally separate approach that doesn't even tie in to some of the natural things that they want to start doing for their overall health or for their thyroid health. I think we're programmed maybe as a society and even within healthcare to just think, gosh, migraines, you need abortive medications or you need other types of prescriptive medications to kind of stop that um, pathway, right, of pain that causes the migraine. Now, of course, there are a lot of natural approaches to working with some of the common, uh, most frequent uh, symptoms that are related to migraine headaches. But I think one of the underlying things that doesn't get resolved for people with thyroid issues is actually just making sure that the thyroid is being treated uh, very well as well. So today, let's just talk a little bit about how common chronic migraines are. Uh, the Migraine Research Foundation has found that this is a very prevalent neurological disease affecting 39 million Americans. Now, interestingly enough, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's affects around 30 million Americans as well. And also, migraines tend to be more prevalent in women than in men. 
also true of Hashimoto's, more common in women than in men. So if we look at these two statistics together, we can actually see, well, gosh, maybe there is this kind of endocrine neuro neurological related kind of co-pathway between these two conditions that is likely to increase the risk of migraine headaches in any individuals who are also having um, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, etc. So endocrine um, disorders, you know, we're talking about the endocrine uh, system of the body, right? Hormones, uh, glands, all the tissues that are part of this HPA axis that you hear me talk a lot about in my videos. Um, what I think is interesting in this, my video today, I really hope will shed light on is that you can take some steps to reduce your risk of headaches and improve your overall quality of life by looking at some of these interrelationships with maybe some other coexisting health conditions, not just with the thyroid, but other things that come along with having hypothyroidism. So one of the studies that I've been reading about really tried to identify and address patients with chronic migraine um, and compared this group uh, within, within that population of those who were also receiving care for a metabolic or endocrine system disorder compared to those who were not receiving care for endocrine or metabolic related disorders. So they kind of looked within this entire group of migraine sufferers and said, who's getting treatment, who's not getting treatment. Um, and they found some other connections that I think are really interesting. So they actually found a link with insulin sensitivity, which means, you know, blood sugar dysregulation. Um, they were looking at specifically the type 2 diabetes, um, which seemed to show a higher association with migraines and seemed to disappear among the po that uh, population of their study that was getting treatment for um, insulin sensitivity. Um, so they also found that individuals within this group, those who had higher body weight or body fat composition, and those who had high blood pressure also re increased the risk of episodic and chronic migraines. So um, what we're really kind of looking at is this whole complex situation that may exist within someone who has hypothyroidism that may also include blood sugar dysregulation, dysregulated weight, and also having um, the... Uh, buh, 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 cardiovascular related conditions. So now what we're actually talking about is metabolic syndrome. And so we know that metabolic syndrome can be a part of the picture for a lot of people who are on this kind of pathway with, um, you know, uh, the first thing they notice is, wow, I can't really lose weight very easily anymore. Wow, I really have some sugar cravings or, um, you know, wow, my cholesterol is getting really high. They start to see kind of these markers early on and they can be related to the endocrine disorders such as hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, Graves, etc. But really what we're looking at is this total dysregulation of a lot of these systems that work together to keep things in homeostasis. Um, so when we have these endocrine conditions that coexist with migraines, um, I think it can help us to better appreciate that uh, when you are not maybe being managed very well for your thyroid condition, it kind of creates this um, snowball effect, if you will, right? So uh, obviously we know that there are a multitude of symptoms that come along with hypothyroidism, and you can watch my other video all about some of those most common symptoms. But I think what we need to look at is that they all kind of have the un same underlying um, triggers. So let's go back to some of the research. I've got this up here. Uh, the thyroid migraine link, um, they are suggesting that, uh, you know, low thyroid is one of the most uh, kind of common things. Then it was the insulin resistance. Uh, and then it was diabetes and then body weight and high blood pressure ultimately leading to this sort of discussion around uh, metabolic syndrome. So I think what these researchers are basically trying to draw the conclusion with is that migraine is a risk factor for, for developing metabolic syndrome and vice versa. Um, the metabolic syndrome boosts risk of heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, um, 
dysregulated body weight, dysregulated endocrine system, and more. And one of those uh, outcomes or the symptom is chronic migraine. Um, a second study found that the rise in chronic migraines may have occurred in women who were also diagnosed as having metabolic syndrome. But when those patients were diagnosed um, as having um, potentially some issues in being mistreated, their risks for migraine increased even further. So this means that the use of pain medication or thyroid replacement medication or insulin uh, replacement may also cause some individuals to develop migraines. Really? This is so interesting, right? So it is so much more complex than this, um, than what sometimes just meets the eye. And today, um, just today as I was preparing to get ready for this video, <clears throat> I was doing um, just kind of a quick search through the number of clients that I've seen just in the past six months who had migraine or headaches, chronic headaches checked on their intake form, and those who had um, a thyroid-related condition, and it was actually 100%. So just in the past six months, clients who visited my office um, to work with me on a hypothyroid Hashimoto's um, nutrition plan actually did check the box for having these chronic headaches and migraines. Now I can say also because I'm a Hashimoto's patient as well, that migraines have definitely been a part of my own picture. In fact, my particular type of chronic migraine is called a vestibular migraine, which means it kind of happens in the vestibular system of the body. It may not actually feel like a headache, but it kind of makes me feel maybe a little bit like dizzy, woozy, like I'm on a boat, like I'm kind of, um, you know, a little bit off balance, has a little bit of kind of a vertigo element. Um, and interestingly enough, these migraines came on for me um, at a time when I was experiencing cardiovascular dysfunction because I had learned that I have a hole in my heart. Um, and that was back in uh, 2018. So I, even in my own life, I see how these all can be interrelated. Now, I don't have metabolic syndrome, but the final piece that I wanted to bring into um, this, because remember early on I said that women are at a greater risk. Well, guess what else women are at a greater risk of? Having hormone-related headaches such as those from estrogen dominance or from low estrogen at the time of perimenopause and menopause. So this can complicate things either even further. We're talking about endocrine disruption, not just within the thyroid, but also within the sex hormones, uh, the sex organs and the reproductive hormones. So um, yes, a lot of women who are entering into their late 40s, early 50s, and they're starting to notice, you know, changes in their cycle, they're starting to notice the onset of perimenopause, they may also be experiencing chronic headaches or migraines, and they, they may be misdiagnosed for an oncoming Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism because their doctor just says, well, it's just, let's just chalk it up to the fact that you are experiencing hormone changes because you are of a certain age, right? So, um, there are a couple of different headache specialists that I was reading about online, and um, basically, uh, neurolog this one particular neurologist um, and headache specialist um, who's down in Texas uh, basically said that migraine is one of the most complex um, and likely is to play into the development, meaning contributing to, or as a result of a number of different conditions. Um, so her experience was that, you know, any person who's experiencing migraine or intense headaches should not be written off that this is not just the condition itself, but that there is usually another underlying condition. And I couldn't agree more. You know, our bodies are so interconnected. It's not just a single system that's affected. It's not just the neurological component of the headache, but something else that may be going on. She says, um, having a migraine is not normal and we really need to get to the root of what the medical condition is because it may be the underlying condition that is actually uh, the debilitating factor or may have other risk factors or maybe even, um, you know, kind of complex issues down the road, right? Especially if we're talking about blood sugar dysregulation, we're talking about cardiovascular issues, etc. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that technically there's no cure for a migraine. There's medications that treat. There are medications that are designed to be abortive or to reduce the likelihood of a migraine um, occurring. But what I would like to share with you is that there are some ways in which, um, especially if you know, okay, A, I have Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism or Graves, um, and I am experiencing 
these kind of chronic headaches, there's a few things that you can do naturally to start to incorporate as a part of your overall wellness plan and your overall nutritional plan for um, helping to support your healthy thyroid that you can start to bring on board. Now, number one, it goes back to everything I've just said in the whole 15 minutes so far of this video, which is you need to make sure that you have been examined for all underlying possible causes of headache, okay? Um, Make sure that the doctor is working with you to check off every box, making sure that they're checking blood sugar regulation, they're checking for signs of metabolic syndrome, they're checking to make sure the cardiovascular system is healthy, they're maybe checking hormones, um, and also checking you know, to make sure and, and consulting with you to make sure that your weight is also not a contributing factor. That's sometimes easier said than done if you're dealing with hypothyroidism and you're having a hard time maybe finding time for exercise or you're just really dealing with that stubborn, resistant weight loss. Okay, so let's start to think about, you know, in addition to all of my other videos that just talk about living healthfully with Hashimoto's, let's talk about the specific things that are known to help with um, these endocrine-related headaches. Okay, the first one is, are you dehydrated? Chances are you are. I do testing in my office that shows that the majority of people, especially here in Colorado, are dehydrated, and so the first thing is to make sure that you're getting adequate water, all right? Studies definitely show that chronic dehydration does relate to tension, headaches, and migraines. And the reason is because, you know, this is going to create some vasoconstriction in the veins, in the arteries, and also um, it is reducing the likelihood of nutrition getting to where it needs to go throughout the body, including into the brain. Um, checking into your potential nutritional deficiencies. So there's a lot of research behind deficiencies in things like CoQ10, B-complex vitamins, magnesium, calcium. These types of deficiencies that go hand in hand with endocrine disorders may also be the underlying deficiencies that are also causing some of the headaches. So work with someone who's board certified in holistic nutrition, like me, to get to the bottom of what those deficiencies may be and kill two birds with one stone. Um, are you consuming too much caffeine or alcohol. Now, of course, you know I have other videos about caffeine and alcohol if you have Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism. These are toxins, right? These are known toxins. Our body has to process alcohol. Our digestive system has to deal with it. Not only does it dehydrate, but it takes time for your body to get this ethyl alcohol out of your body. And if you have gen different genetic SNPs, if you have maybe methylation um, pathway disruption, if you have um, nutritional deficiencies, if you are constipated, you may have a variety of reasons why this toxin that you're ingesting is sticking around in your body too long and it's causing problems. Not to mention both alcohol and caffeine can disrupt blood sugar regulation in your body. So another element to think about is to cut back on those. Again, another one that's easier said than done, but making sure you're focusing on the, important of, the importance of sleep. It is so easy to develop a headache if you are chronically tired, right? And if you're having trouble with sleep and um, you know, you've, you've done all of the things, all the resources that I've provided in other videos around a sleep uh, routine and sleep hygiene and cutting out screens and da 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 and all the things, right? And stretching and trying essential oils and baths before bed and reading and um, all that stuff and it's still not working. You need to look into, are you not sleeping well? Because again, is it hormonal? Are you dealing with sleep apnea? Do you have maybe obstructive like sinuses that's causing you know poor oxygenation while you're sleeping? Um, do you have restless leg syndrome? There's all these different things that could be going on. So getting to the bottom of why you're not sleeping is also really important. Um, things that can also contribute to having chronic headaches if you're dealing with also Hashimoto's could be that you might be very intolerant to certain foods, right? So we already know, you've watched my other videos about gluten, about dairy, about sugar, about nightshades, about uh, goitrogens, blah, 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 all of the different things, right? Grains that can all contribute to the leaky gut, that can contribute to um, the disruption of our body's immune system by way of the, of the digestive tract. Well, guess what else is involved? Maybe lectins, maybe histamine, maybe um, other types of antigens that are just seeping through um, in the small intestine and getting into the bloodstream where they don't belong, triggering inflammation 
in the brain and causing headaches. So please remember leaky gut, leaky brain, and anytime there's systemic wide inflammation because of a food, it's going to cause things like pain, which would include headaches. So check that out with a provider um, and try to get to the bottom of it. So other things uh, that you can do um, would be to have a really comprehensive uh, toolbox of resources, um, acupuncture, chiropractic, yoga, meditation, um, these types of lifestyle practices obviously contribute to your overall health and wellness as well as your overall better quality of life living with Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism or other endocrine disorders while also helping to resolve some of those underlying issues that may include the headaches, okay? Um, so that was just kind of a catch-all. Um, that would include some of the lifestyle practices that you can do to help support stress, pain, um, and self-care, uh, pain management and self-care in your life. Research does show that one of the simplest ways to reduce headache frequency is to get some physical activity because it helps to improve blood flow. Um, a research study showed that 90 out of 91 people found that 80% of them who got 40 minutes per uh, 40 minutes, I'm sorry, three times per week of, a, of an aerobic activity had fewer headache uh, occurrences. So again, they found that 80% of those people doing 40 minutes three times per week had fewer uh, headache frequency. I just find that to be really interesting. There's a much larger study of more than 92,000 people. That study showed that low levels of physical activity was associated with an increased risk of headaches. So you want to start small. You want to know what type of activity maybe is the right one for you. Easy ways to get started with things like walking, jogging, indoor cycling, um, yoga, stretching, tai chi, pilates, etc. And then start to slowly work up so that you're getting the benefits both for your total body, including body composition and reducing um, unhealthy weight, but also to help el um, eliminate these chronic types of headaches. There are some herbs that can be really helpful in terms of their anti-inflammatory properties. But you have to be careful, especially if you're taking a wide variety of maybe different medications, if it's to control blood pressure, or if you are type two diabetic, you need to be careful with certain herbs. But generally speaking, even something as gentle as like maybe a ginger tea, or using some fresh grated turmeric in your uh, cooking, those two herbs can be very anti-inflammatory and very helpful. Also, the aromatics of certain culinary herbs can help to reduce headaches. So just getting some fresh mint and kind of crushing it up in your fingers and taking in the aromas can help with um, reducing headache. In fact, there um, are companies who provide the essential oils with the peppermint smell that you can apply to your temples or to the base of your neck and that can also be very helpful in reducing or alleviating some pain. Um, for myself personally, I have found that um, the aroma of rosemary, fresh rosemary, is very helpful um, for helping to kind of keep some of the chronic tension headaches or the occasional migraine that I experience at bay. So I love to have a little rosemary bush on my window um, at both my office and at my, in my kitchen. I use it a lot, obviously, in cooking, but it's just a great thing to break off a couple of little stems and enjoy the aroma of the rosemary to help with um, kind of, you know, reversing some of those impacts. So um, I hope that today's video has been informative. I could go on and on. This is so far um, maybe just the tip of the iceberg. I think what's important to know is that people who present with headaches typically have these underlying endocrine, cardiovascular, blood sugar, and potentially even metabolic or other hormonal underlying conditions that are playing a huge role. So I would like for you to make sure you're working closely with your doctor to get the proper testing and to make sure that you're ruling out any other potential life-threatening or complicating uh, issues with co-conditions and also that you're working with a qualified, board-certified holistic nutrition practitioner who can help guide you in the proper food choices, if you need an elimination diet, if you need nutrient testing, if you should be taking particular supplements that are specifically designed for you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I put out a new video every Friday, so if you're new here, welcome. Remember to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll be back soon. Thanks so much.